All right, so another important video in our OBS tutorial is understanding the settings, getting out of the simple mode, going into advanced, and understanding what we're talking about here. So let's get into it in this course. Here we go, I got the settings bar open and I'm ready to take you guys through it. So first of all, in the general settings area, how do we get to the settings area, right? The settings area is in file settings. I'm for sure you guys can get there. File settings. Once you get into settings, we've got general. We talked about, there's all these different, can you believe how many languages they support? It's incredible. All the different themes here. And uh, you can decide whether or not you want to automatically check for updates. On the output area, you can show confirmation dialog when you're starting streams, automatically record when you are streaming. And we'll talk about why you might want to do that. Um, this is the source alignment. This allows you to do that uh, snapping and unsnapping of the UI. Uh, you can hide uh, your cursor over if you're doing a projector on the output and make sure that projectors are always on top. Then you have the system tray, which you can enable or minimize at startup. Studio mode, we talked about this being one of my favorites there, the transition to scene when double clicked. Uh, you can enable portrait or vertical layout. And then finally, this is a new feature that we're going to dig into later on in this course, but multi-view in general here. Click to switch between scenes and the ability. A multi-view is essentially an output from OBS that shows a screen that you can see multiple sources on. So it's really great if you have multiple screens that you want to take a look at and kind of monitor. Okay, so on the streaming tab, this is where we can enter all of our information. Generally, most of us are using custom streaming servers. Uh, but for example, like if you use Twitch, they already know what the server is and they'll actually look at it for you and use a recommended one. Always choose the server that's closest to you or else you'll have a larger delay and that's what that auto's for there. Uh, for example, there's YouTube. They've just got a primary. And um, essentially, you have the ability to also type in a custom URL and stream key as well, okay? That's where you put in your information for your stream and you'll find that information from Facebook, from YouTube, from Twitch. Now on the output side, I've already switched it from simple to advanced, but let's just look at the simple really quickly. If you are using simple, you essentially can choose your bit rate, which is the quality of your live stream, your encoder, which is either software or hardware, and I'll show you how to set that up, and your audio bitrate. So there's a video bitrate and an audio bitrate. Now you can enable advanced encoder settings, which opens up a couple more uh, options here in the simple mode. OBS generally suggests very fast, and they do that by default. The higher the fastness, the less uh, CPU, right? So very fast is good. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into the advanced mode. Now, before we do, one more thing. There's recording options here. Obviously, you can set the path of your recordings, where you want your recordings to be saved. You can uh, select to have the recording quality be the same as your stream, which is uh, lighter on your CPU usage because there's no additional scaling that needs to be done. You can choose a format, which most people are using MP4, but the thing to know about MP4, and you'll see this little warning pop up right down here, is that if your computer crashes, if something happens during your live stream, the entire video will be lost. If you use MKV, that warning does not come up. If your computer dies halfway through your stream, you can actually use a feature in OBS called Remux and get that video back, even if it's stopped mid-recording. So that's kind of cool. But most people still use MP4. That's what I still use. I'm not uh, assuming that my computer is going to die at any, any moment. Now, we're going to go into advanced mode. And this is where we're going to really have a chance to talk about your different settings and how to get the most out of your OBS production. Now, first of all, if you see options other than X264, you want to figure out what they are and use them. NVENC is my NVIDIA graphics card. My laptop has an NVIDIA graphics card. That's called the GPU, right? The graphics processing unit. We want to take as much off of our CPU 
right? The processor in our computer, the main core processor, whether it's an i5 or an i7, we want to put as much of this onto the GPU as possible. So I'm going to choose my NVIDIA graphics card there. And I'm not going to rescale the output, but you can do that. So if you want to rescale it, so let's say our base canvas is 1920 by 1080, but we want to uh, rescale, upscale it to 4K. You could do that if you wanted to. Or for example, what a lot of people do is a lot of people, and I'll show this in simple mode, will have, actually, I think it's actually managed in the output mode. Where is that? Okay, in the video section. You can actually have like the base be 1920 by 1080 and the you could scale the output in 1280, for example, because Facebook still really only does 720, 1280 by 720. Anyway, so while we're in <coughs> the advanced version, excuse me, of the streaming area, we can also choose an audio track. And this is an interesting thing that a lot of people forget to look at is that you can have one audio track uh, sent to your stream and a second audio track sent or multiple audio tracks sent to your recording as well. Now, OBS doesn't actually record a whole bunch of independent audio streams, just so you know. You do have to use, and there's a warning here, so they let you know, you do have to use a format like FLV to support multiple tracks per recording. So, our streaming, just assuming that you're using Facebook here, 2500 is really kind of like the minimum um, that, that, that really is acceptable nowadays. A lot of people like to stream in like 5,000. So that's five megabits per second. Now, how do we figure out what you should be doing, what you're even capable of streaming? Well, what you want to do is you want to think about how much bandwidth upload speed do you have? So you can contact your internet service provider, whether it's Comcast or Verizon or Cox or AT&T and say, all right, what's my download speeds? What's my upload speeds? Well, we're talking about upload speeds, right? So if you have 20 megabits of upload speed, that's what we have here, you really only want to use 10 of those for your stream. So you only want to use half of what's available. If you start using more, that's a, that's a general rule of thumb. You know, leave some headroom, some network bandwidth headroom for fluctuations. What if someone starts using some upload from Dropbox or something on your network? You don't want that to be, you know, messing up your stream. So generally leave some headroom or you're going to find that you're going to have some dropped frames and things could start getting, uh, you could have more issues. Now we'll talk about dropped frames later, but select only a maximum of half your upload speed. That's your bit rate, right? That's your pipeline that you have available from your computer to your internet service provider to the world. So only use half of that. So you can figure that out. You can do a, you can do a speed test on Google. They'll tell you your upload speed and then only choose half of that. Now it's set to CBR. That's constant bit rate. That's good. You want to use constant bit rate because you don't want there to be a whole bunch of variations and buffering going on. You want that. So 5,000, that's probably pretty good. CBR. Now the keyframe is generally set to zero, which is auto. You could look into exactly what Facebook and YouTube request and put that in, but most people just leave that at zero. So that handles the streaming section. On the recording section, again, we're going to look at standard here. Um, we're going to record an MP4. There's nothing wrong with that, except for the fact that if your computer dies, you know, you're going to have an issue. Um, we're going to use the GPU for that. You could use the CPU, by the way, if you feel like you you can handle it, and that will actually make your stream better. Because if you want, if you do everything on your GPU and say that's what's going to handle all of my streaming and encoding, then you can just use the uh, the processor that you have for the the recording. I highly suggest using an SSD, solid state hard drive. That'll get your best recordings. And there's no need to really rescale the output above your, you know, your what you're streaming unless unless you can support that. Now um, we're getting the warning about MP4s that we talked about. Generally, you can do variable bit control for your this is VBR variable bit control for your recordings because if it buffers a little bit, that's okay. We want to get the highest quality recording. It's not it doesn't have to be real time. Now, 2500, again, I'm surprised that they use that 
uh, as a default because that's incredibly low for a recording. Right now, this video is recorded in 16 megabits per second, which I consider pretty good, but a 4K normal video would be like at least 100 megabits per second. So like a really high-end camcorder would be like 50 megabits per second, but those files can really stack up. So I think you'll be fine, most of us out there, in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 megabits per second. So I'm gonna put 10 megabits per second, which would be 10,000 there, right? A bit rate of 10,000. And I think that you're gonna like that. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna think that's good. And then just stick with very fast for the CPU usage. Now on the audio side, this is something that we'll have to look in the audio, advanced audio properties to, to go through this completely here. But this is the bit rate that per track. So for our stream, we'll stick to 128, but for our recording, for our high quality recording, we can do 320. So on our recording, what we'll do is we'll select track two, because track two is a higher quality bit rate. We're not streaming it, we're just keeping it there for our high quality recording. So everything we wanna stack up good, good high quality recordings if we can handle it. Now in the bottom right, one of the things you'll see, let me, give you a little more space to see this here. You'll see the CPU bar, okay? Right down there. And you gotta keep your eye on that. You never want that to go above 50 to 60%. So if your CPU starts to go too high, cut maybe cut the recording. Maybe you don't have the horsepower to record and stream at the same time or reduce the bit rate that you're recording at or reduce the bit rate that you're streaming at um, or reduce some of the sources that are coming into your computer. We'll talk about some of the reasons why you might be getting dropped frames, one of them is that your computer just simply can't do what you're asking it to do. So keep an eye on that. But anyway, back to audio, we're gonna do track two is gonna be recording to our, our recordings. Track one is going to be for our streams. Now in the audio side here, I mentioned this a little earlier in our course, but just to refresh, 44.1 is generally used for audio devices, like audio mixers and stuff. 48 kilohertz is coming from generally like cameras and things of that nature where, you know, you're bringing in a capture card or a camera that has a microphone included. So you have to figure out what your sample rate is coming from your audio source and make sure that matches up. Now, stereo versus mono, you will get a little bit better quality in your stream by using mono. Um, so I suggest using mono. Stereo will sound better on your recording um, because you know you're getting that really uh, nice 320 kilobit per second audio stream. So choose stereo if you really care more about the recording. Choose mono if you care more about the stream. Now a lot of this other stuff here. So this is showing that uh, all the sources that we have available and showing that you know basically we're not pulling audio from any of these other sources that I have. I have a desktop audio device, one, two, or three, but I can, if I want to, add additional audio devices in here. So this is where you can add all of your additional audio devices, which is good to have. So for example, if I have a virtual audio cable coming from something, or if I have maybe uh, some headphones coming from a capture card um, or a microphone, we'll, we'll put that in there just, just as a test. Really quickly before we go on to video, what we'll do is we'll go into edit and we will open up our advanced audio properties. And you'll see here that each one of our audio inputs here is going to have a track. So by default, all tracks are checked, which is good. It doesn't really matter that much, but you just have to make sure that if you want to send maybe one microphone or one audio source just to your recording, and a separate one to your um, stream, then you would, you would make sure that these right tr uh, tracks are cl clicked. So there you go. That just gives you a little idea of how all that's set up. We talked about bit rate streaming. We talked about audio. So we're really getting far here. Now on the video side, one of the things I wanted to mention here is that uh, the, in the video settings, it will scale the processing on your graphics card rather than the CPU. So this is good. If you need to do scaling, do it in the video section because it'll definitely use your, your, your uh, GPU, your graphics card for that. Uh, so if, you, if you're going to scale the output, do it here. You don't need to do it on the output side. Um, it, it'd be better to do it here. 
Now, if you're recording, um, one of the things I want to make sure that people remember about frame rate here is that uh, there's no need to really stream in 60 frames a second unless you're doing some high-end gaming of some sort. And even then, uh, it's more about your screen having the, the, the fast refresh rates. The, the, for people to decode and watch uh, something at 60 frames a second, it's a little bit out there, especially if you're doing a business presentation or anything of that nature. So even if you have a camera that's capable of 60 frames a second, or a um, you know device that's is capable of 59.94 frames per second, only use it if you absolutely have to. It's much better to have everything in your chain set to 30 frames per second. It looks more natural. It actually could look kind of weird to have uh, 60 frames a second if you're not playing sports. It actually looks kind of odd. So just don't do it. I'll, I'll talk about that more in an upcoming video about using the 180 degree shutter speed rule and why you really shouldn't be using 60 frames a second for like static, and I'm not running around here type of content. Okay, so we talked about all of that stuff. There's only a little bit left here, and I wanna talk a little bit about dropped frames. Now you'll see here, once you start recording and you start streaming, we'll save hotkeys and the advanced stuff for an, an additional video. You'll see at the bottom here, that the CPU will be there. And once you start streaming, you'll see a dropped frames in the bottom here. And what could be the cause of that? Well, one could be the CPU. So your, your processor just can't handle it. The next thing could be your internet connection. So that could be why you're dropping frames. Maybe you just don't have enough upload speed to support it. And if that's the case, you just need to check your bit rate to see if maybe um, you, know, you just have your bit rate higher than what your upload speed can support. So I think that gives you a pretty good overview of the settings that we have over here on OBS. And hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to get started. Next, we're going to go over uh, OBS and look at all the new things available in 22, including the new Stingers, including the new Hotkeys, Multiview, Themes, Studio Mode, Audio Monitoring, a little bit about NDI before we get into all of our a la carte tutorials that I hope you guys enjoy. And then we'll get into this stuff that I think everyone should know about more advanced NDI functionality in OBS. See you guys soon. Hit that like button.